It's nice to um, be part of this conference, uh, a terrific conference. Uh, I've been listening, listening in on the last few days and um, the quality and diversity of presentations has been really, really impressive. Um, some of the themes that were, have been raised over the last few days, you probably see um, uh, sprinkled through, through my presentation. Um, and I guess a little bit of background. Um, I've worked in the mining industry for about 12 years, studying in Australia in the coal sector for Anglo-American and then uh, moving to London. Uh, to work for Anglo and then uh, hopping on to the International Council of Money and Metals to run their communications. Uh, I was fortunate enough to come in uh, to the ICMM at a time when the industry was thinking about how you can better communicate with society. So I'll tell you a little bit about the story behind that and then come back to this question about will perceptions uh, of the mining industry matter post COVID-19. So it'll be some thoughts, some, some reflections that I welcome your comments on. Um, just to get started, um, the, the, the industry got a big wake-up call back in the late 90s, um, particularly some of the leading, uh, the CEOs of some of the leading mining houses, where they were seeing uh, perspectives or, or commentary from society, pressure from society, the, the, the environmental movement, which was um, gathering momentum, uh, putting uh, the spotlight on how mining was or wasn't performing in terms of um, sustainability. Uh, there was a famous conference at Davos um, where a group of CEOs were left kind of dumbfounded by, by the, the, the pushback that we were receiving from a lot of the participants. Uh, that got them thinking about something needing to be done. Uh, and after a fair bit of work uh, in terms of stakeholder um, uh, conversations and consultation, um, the RCMM uh, was born um, to try and improve the sustainability performance of its members. And after a number of years, um, uh, despite significant effort to improve that performance, at least in the eyes of the miners themselves, um, perceptions uh, amongst the public and stakeholders uh, in particular were, were not improving. And so um, the, 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 you know, as you can see on the screen, some of the contributors to that, from a basic point, uh, negative imagery of mining, old, dangerous, destructive, the issue of coal, um, child labor, um, uh, environmental impacts, uh, you name it, uh, governance, corruption. Uh, they're all um, themes and, and images that were floating around um, society uh, and impacting on the, on the reputation of, uh, of, of, of the industry. And one of the reasons it matters to CEOs, of course, is because um, it has a material impact. Uh, if communities don't support your projects, they will be delayed or stopped. There are billions of dollars worth of uh, stalled projects around the world um, that hasn't changed. If anything, it could be getting worse, particularly in places like Peru and other parts of Latin America. And as you as you all know, the the investment community is, is paying a lot more attention uh, to how companies deal with ESG, putting a value on it, and uh, and uh, an outcome of that also is uh, potential share price volatility. So very much. Uh, front of mind in terms of uh, risk to value. Uh, what we knew about um, stakeholder perceptions in this case back then, uh, there was a study done by Globescan, you may, may be aware of, uh, back in 2014. And uh, no surprises here uh, that amongst the more than 1,200 stakeholders, ICMM stakeholders, that is, that were um, uh, engaged uh, during that time and dispersed around the world uh, in a range of um, of sectors from NGOs to academics, uh, industry people themselves, trade unions, and, and people like ourselves in the, in the consultancy advisory space. That's a so social community acceptance we're, we're top of mind um, as, as key issues for the industry to, to address. Governance closely followed. Um, price, cost, pressures, volatility. Um, it was a time when the industry um, was, was coming back from, from or, or it, in a fairly shaky space, um, stakeholders acknowledge that as well. Uh, so that, that's why that's there. Water usage creeping up the list uh, and environmental concerns, of course, uh, also there. Um, so that list may have changed somewhat in terms of ordering, but pretty much the same issues um, have, um, have, been, you know, have been challenges for us for, for some time since. And what about the public? Um, the ICMM also surveyed um, um, 
members of the public in, in this kind of Australia, Peru, Chile, USA, and Zambia. Um, and interestingly, trust uh, came up as the key driver of, of acceptance of, of the mining industry, driven by three primary factors. One is distributional fairness, so the benefits, sharing of the benefits of mining with society and the perception that that is not happening or has not been happening. So community is not feeling that they were getting the jobs, the investments, um, the, the support of livelihoods that they felt that they uh, deserved as a result of mining in their regions. Procedural fairness in terms of um, engagement and input into decision-making processes by, by society. Um, uh, there's a sense of opaqueness behind how decisions are made in terms of mining projects. Um, and confidence in government, governance, which is linked to the second point around corruption, um, uh, transparency, and, and um, integrity and credibility of, of um, government and, and its institutions. Um, what was made clear also is that perceptions vary between countries and within countries themselves. So if you look at, for example, um, places like Australia and, and Peru, um, or even Canada, in Canada you have, um, broadly speaking, and, and, and you know, there are variants, but society or Canadians being broadly supportive of their mining, mining industry. Less so the case in Peru, particularly in, in mining communities themselves. And a mixed story in Australia. Uh, in Australia in particular, there's a, there's a divide between how urban uh, Aussies um, regard the industry and, and how uh, people in, in rural and regional areas, particularly in mining towns, see the, the, the mining industry obviously more supportive in those regional centres. Uh, also, another point here is while mining, so individual mining companies may be well perceived in different parts of the world, the industry as a whole is not. So the challenge for mining companies is, well, it's, we are investing all this money in, in promoting our soil, but at the end of the day, that counts for little uh, if, if the sector or the industry we're a part of is not well perceived. So the, the CEOs in this case, and I keep mentioning the CEOs, but one of the unique things about ICMM is it's a CEO-led organisation. So at the moment, you've got 27 of the world leading mining companies represented, represented and their CEOs turn up. To, to the meeting. So the conversations that are being had at the council of the ICMM, uh, you're only allowed to have CEOs there. Um, so they've um, challenged uh, themselves and, and the organization itself to better tell the story. And um, part of the challenge I was confronted with is going about how, how do we do that? Um, the mining industry had never run a communications campaign, a global communications campaign, um, we, 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 we barely communicated as an industry. We tend to sort of be shy of putting our head above the parapet for fear of getting it locked off. Um, so what I'm providing you with here is a bit of a helicopter view of, of what we did. Um, and I'll come back to the, the post-COVID uh, perception question uh, towards the end. Um, the approach we took uh, had as a central objective um, an influencing influences approach, which we've heard about uh, earlier in, in, in the week. Um, this was very much, uh, we put in place a campaign to test what could um, or wouldn't work in terms of shifting public perceptions. We saw public, the shifting of those perceptions as a long-term goal um, and as a way of getting there, um, targeting some of these influences. And by influences, we mean sort of NGOs, media, academia, investors, and, and uh, in the case of Peru, where we did a deep dive, uh, citizens themselves. The core message um, we applied was money with principles, largely based on ICMM's 10 principles. Um, but one of the sort of key reasons also for, for applying that is that we wanted the campaign not to be a one-way information share, but to spark a conversation uh, with society um, by posing questions around what responsible mining might look like, combined with some good examples of, of how we're going about it. We felt that mining with principles is something that the industry is, was aspiring to, but would help us generate the discussion. Um, so the approach we took very quickly, we, we, we had a, a couple of broad phases. The first one of the campaign, and it ran over about 18 months, um, uh, was to um, uh, raise awareness of, of uh, what uh, everyday products are made of and how those, those um, products are, are mined responsibly. 
Uh, we then um, transitioned that into, in the second part of the campaign, into the telling of beneficiary stories, those people in the communities in which we operate, how they've been benefiting uh, from, from the, pre the presence of, of mining, whether in terms of um, jobs, uh, impact on you know, uh, environment and, and uh, ethical practices. Uh, we targeted five countries, although a global campaign, because it had a, a social media component, but also traditional media, which obviously is by its nature uh, global. But we, we tended to, we, we, we also focus on, on five jurisdictions to see what would work in those. So it's Australia, Canada. In Peru, we did a deeper dive where we went into a couple of communities in southern Peru, um, Arequipa and Cusco, where there is a significant mining presence to see how our messaging might, might resonate there around mining principles in Spanish, of course. The UK and the US were also included. UK, particularly London, as a centre of influence. Uh, where many of the NGOs and, and, and thought leaders in, in, in the space uh, are based and drive opinion. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in the US, we will focus more in, on New York. Um, uh, interestingly, we had to drop the US um, because we got a lot of pushback. This was the time when Trump had been elected and there was a lot of sensitivity about the mining industry going in with a, with a different story than what was expected, one that focused on sustainability and how mining could improve um, its, its performance. So we, we were compelled to drop that, unfortunately. And then an opportunity for, for, a, for, a, for the members of ICMM to lead, lead by example. This is a, a splash of a lot of the campaigns are run away um, um, by companies and, and, and associations. They, they, they range, as you can see in the top line, there was a campaign in Australia promoting coal to the green whale of the Canadian Mining Association uh, on the left. So quite a disparate set of messages um, getting out there, uh, all focused on, on particular audiences, but no overarching narrative for the sector to, to project. And that's what we tried to, to do um, as a collective. Our online presence, we, we set up a, 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 a website um, with all the content we, we were producing um, and you've got the link there. I, I'd encourage you to, to, to scroll through that because it's filled with um, case studies of, uh, of the work that members do, stories from local communities. A lot of content was developed for this, for this campaign um and uh put on there uh, ceos were, were were involved as well which was a, a very encouraging um encouraging thing um as i said we this is just examples of the imagery that we put out there um we we had the mobile phones uh, everyday products like chairs and bicycles posing a question this was all on social media posing a question uh whether this you know uh, is this mined responsibly or is this produced responsibly is this produced ethically the idea with the question was to uh spark that interest and engagement from uh from from the audiences um again here uh, an image of uh, one of the beneficiary stories we ran in in peru uh america has established their own business in, in arequipa with support of one of, of the icmm companies that developed uh, was developing a copper mine changed her life and that of the, the little community around her uh, in a very poor part of, of our keeper. There's a video about her that we've, we went out and, and got, we filmed um, and put online, which ran very well, was well received in the local community. Uh, and also um, CEOs, so we, we filmed a number of the, the, the member CEOs um, to get their perspectives on what they felt in this case, ethical business was about. You've got uh, their Tanya Constable from the Minerals Council of Australia uh, sharing her very personal perspectives on what mining with principles is about. Graham Kerr, as you can see uh, down below. So these are also very well received and an interesting challenge to get the, the, the CEOs to talk about what they felt as people, not just as CEOs in terms of responsible or, or mining with principles. So the key takeaways um, of, of the, 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 the short campaign is that we were able to establish a compelling narrative for the industry for, for the first time. Um, now, mindful, many of those, if not all of you, may not have heard about this, this campaign. Um, and as I said, it was uh, targeted at particular, particular audiences um, with limited budget, although an enhanced budget by, by, by CMM standards. Uh, but focusing mainly on those, those um, uh, audiences that, broadly speaking, did not have a positive view 
uh, of mining or do not know about mining. We weren't trying to preach the converted, but still in, instead engage in a conversation with, uh, with our critics. Um, uh, it is possible to shift perceptions. The case in Peru uh, was, was, was uh, very um, encouraging. Um, just as a, as a side note, we, we did a radio campaign there because the, 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 um, the penetration of social media is very limited. Um, and, and we ran these uh, local beneficiary videos and, and, and pushed the message of mining with principles. Very good receptiveness in the place like Arequipa, where the local community can see and feel the benefits of mining more than other places. Different story in Cusco, where um, those benefits were not perceived as, 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 as in Arequipa, and there was a greater prevalence of, of activism in that community. So we, we were able to get data about the types of conversations that were being had around the dinner table in particular homes. That's a level, level of detail we were able to get into and uh, gave us some really good feedback on, on, on how to approach different regions. And more broadly, global stakeholder feedback was positive because we weren't trying to greenwash or, or put up you know, sort of propaganda, but instead engage in a, in a sort of more humble conversation about uh, acknowledging the challenges, but also putting forward um, the approach um, these companies are seeking to take to improve performance around these principles. Um, so another key takeaway, ongoing commitment by the CEOs. They said, this is important. We need to keep doing it. Um, and and that's, that's still ongoing. And the content is king. Um, without the right material, uh, these campaigns are, are puff. They need to be uh, backed up by performance on the ground. And that is a message that was very, made very clear to, to all our members uh, and coming from within the membership uh, as well. But some of the challenges, um, you have, you, you're trying to, to, to have competitors, especially in, engaging, uh, you know, speaking with a collective voice. That's easier said than done. Um, global campaigns are hard. They're expensive. They're highly complex, multi-layered. Um, uh, we're relying on, on, on different capable, uh, levels of capability in terms of enabling us to project the message uh, amongst their members and also getting buy-in from, from national commodity associations as well as wider you know, uh, networks of, of those that are critical of the sector. Very challenging. And as I said earlier, uh, adapting content, content to each country is, is a key, is, is critical. Um, just a couple of more slides. Uh, so back to the question, um, will public perceptions matter? The short answer is yes. And we've heard what some of those drivers might be. There's increasing societal expectations, communities um, not welcoming companies they don't trust, um, customer demand, for responsibility of source products will continue to grow. We talk, we've heard about that through responsible sourcing uh, presentations. We, we know that investors see this as a huge issue um, and are putting numbers to it and holding companies to account. And companies themselves need to attract people uh, and, and capital. Uh, and if they're not well regarded, that will not happen. And, you know, and if they don't perform, perform well, that will not happen. Um, an emerging trend um, going forward is ESG being uh, a point of differentiation among companies um, as they see it as a value creating opportunity. Uh, but also I would argue a, a point of potential competitive um, space uh, looking forward. The more value that you're able to generate and attract, the more you want to differentiate yourself. And in closing, um, I hope you can see the full slide. I, I, I've got sort of a, a number of um, heads on, on the right of my screen, but uh, in, in summary, um, uh, ESG will remain front of mind for CEOs uh, for, for, for a long time. Um, these are people that are meant to be looking five, 10 years ahead and what they see is a world that wants them to be more responsible. Um, the top two issues that are consistently put to the ICMM by the CEOs themselves that they worry about, apart from safety, are community relations and water. Um, those are the things that, uh, that um, may not keep them awake at night, but certainly are front of mind when they um, run their businesses. And as, as we're, we're all sort of um, finding out, uh, or, or, or as we assess the impact of COVID, one of the things that seems to be emerging is that governments and corporations will, will be thinking more about purpose, um, more about, about people's well-being. Um, partly as a way of building on the trust that they may have gained as a result of their uh, response to the pandemic, or having to rebuild as a result of how poorly they, they, they've dealt uh, with the pandemic. Either way, 
um, my, I, I, I would argue that we're, we're moving into a space where there'd be more caring and sharing. Uh, I know others may see very differently. That's, um, that's my sense. Uh, the good news is the perceptions can be, can be shifted. Um, it takes time to get cut through, um, but ongoing commitment is, 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 is important along with clear, compelling narrative backed by performance. So all the presentations we've had this, this week are about improving performance and that's critical. The job of people like me in comms it cannot be done without that work being um, carried out on the ground and being able to be back, backed up. Um, also, as I said earlier, an ongoing willingness of the industry and the associations to collaborate. So working together doesn't come easy, uh, let alone communicating uh, together. Um, but we also need to be able to attract high profile champions. Um, the industry, you know, championing itself is not enough. We need to have third party people um, vouch for, for their efforts and engage critical voices. That's critical. And one of the key messages as I finish from the CEOs has been, we don't want to keep preaching to the converted industry. We want to speak to the people that don't necessarily like us, but are willing to engage in a conversation. So finally, what can we as a collective do? Spark the conversation. This is a good start. Um, engage with the networks, ask the questions. As Nick pointed out yesterday or the day before, I think it was, um, you know, engage with the media. If the BBC and, or others want to, 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 to run a piece on, on public perceptions, uh, speak about this stuff at events, at schools, universities, or wherever else you feel um, you have a, a, the ear of the audience. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so, so much, Aldo. I think that gives us an absolutely fantastic insight um, to the Inter International Council for Mining and Metals, um, which is crucial, especially um, for a whole myriad of different players in the mining sector. So thank you for that.